Next, the violence among blacks in South Africa. We get three perspectives on it after this backgrounder by Kwame Holman. February 11, 1990, as the world watched African National Congress leader Nelson Mandela walked away from 27 years in South African prisons. Hopes were high that the budding political reform Mandela's release symbolized would lead to a smooth dismantling of apartheid and ultimately peaceful power sharing between the white minority and the black majority. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, in the months that followed, South African President F.W. de Klerk, in consultation with Mandela, announced dramatic moves toward what the government called irreversible social change. The repeal of the nationwide state of emergency, the unbanning of political opposition, and the opening of public accommodations to all races. Word, can I just say this? But while talks between the ANC and the government proceeded cordially, relations between the ANC and its major political rival, Nkatha, continued to deteriorate. Nkatha supporters, who are mostly Zulu, have clashed for years with supporters of the ANC, many of whom are ex Hosa. It was hoped that recent talks between Mandela and Nkatha leader Mangusuthu Buthalesi would avert further confrontations. But the meeting failed to reconcile the frictions born of Nkatha's more pro-government stance and the traditionally more militant view of the ANC. Both groups now are waging a political struggle for the support of the black majority, a struggle that's grown increasingly violent. The deadly skirmishes between mostly youthful members of Nkatha and the ANC are concentrated in the impoverished black townships and in barracks that house industrial workers. In the last two days, 37 were reported killed, bringing the death toll to 70 this week, 600 since the beginning of the year. The ANC accuses the government of encouraging the mayhem to promote the notion that blacks cannot govern themselves. Reports from the street fighting say neither Nkatha nor the ANC leadership seems much in evidence as the violence continues. ANC leaders have demanded the de Klerk government take specific steps the ANC says will help stop the fighting. Today, President de Klerk announced the government would drop several more laws opposed by the ANC that may or may not help stop the violence. Now three views of the violence in South Africa. Harry Swartz is South Africa's new ambassador to the United States. Chris Honey heads the military wing of the African National Congress. He joins us from Boston. Sipo Mazimela represents Chief Budalese's primarily Zulu in Katha party. He joins us from Atlanta. Mr. Ambassador, what do you think it will take to stop the violence? I think it's necessary for people to sit down and to talk and to be genuine that they want to bring the violence to an end. And to my mind, the sooner that we all sit down and talk, the better it will be for South Africa. It's been suggested by the ANC and others that the government has the power to stop it if it just had the will. Well, if the government were to redeclare the state of emergency and to, were to bring massive troops into the areas, certainly it would be brought to an end almost immediately. But I think that there would be very serious objection to that and I think that it would be counterproductive, and I don't think any one of my colleagues would really like to see that happening, and nor would I. Mr. Honey, is that true for the ANC? Well, it is true. We certainly would oppose the declaration of a state of emergency. But at the same time, we put forward the view that the government has not taken decisive steps to curb the elements who are responsible for this violence. Certainly, it is our perception that the police are not coming out to protect uh, affected communities. Do you believe they could, with the power that they have now, I that think they could using, stop it? I think using the powers they have by identifying the perpetrators of violence, in the same way they identify those who carried out acts of violence against the state in the past, they would stop the violence. Uh, Mr. Mazimela, do you agree that the government could stop this if it wanted to? The government cannot stop the violence in the townships. The, violent, the government can perhaps contain it for a while by sending in troops and police. But this is basically a black and black problem. 
And it's only when the blacks in the warring factions sit down seriously and sort this out, it's only then that we can come up with a solution. Mr. Honey, what would you identify as the cause of this? What, what do you think is the cause of the conflict between the Zulus on the one hand, the Nkatha party, and the ANC, and your folks on the other? The causes of uh, violence are multifold. There's certainly the socio-economic aspect of it, uh, the situation in the hostels and the compounds where there's no family life. Secondly, there is, in our view, a violence orchestrated against us because the government would want to negotiate with a weakened ANC. The, the, you mean the government wants you all to be weakened and as a consequence is encouraging or at least not stopping the Encanta? It is encouraging those who are against us. Not only members of Encanta wouldn't want to accuse Encanta of being behind violence, what would but be there are some vigilante groups who are going into trains, uh, attacking people at random, and also moving into, into, into the locations and attacking people. Mr. Ambassador, is there validity to that charge that the government wants the ANC weakened and is in fact encouraging or at least permitting those who, uh, who are against the ANC to, to, to do what they're doing? I think it's quite wrong because in fact the government wants a negotiating partner, uh, wants the ANC as a negotiating partner, wants in Carter, wants all the other political parties and groupings to be part of the negotiating process. So it's utterly illogical to suggest that the government is trying to weaken a party with whom it wishes, in fact, to bring about a settlement of the political problems in South Africa. I think the truth is that there are, in fact, two people fighting, two groups fighting, and they are now, or at least one of them, is seeking to blame a third party. Now, it just doesn't make sense because there's a very easy way to stop the fighting. The two people who are fighting should stop fighting. It's, it's as simple as that. Mr. Honey, why don't the two parties sit down and resolve this? I mean, you, it, uh, as, the, as the ambassador says, the police, uh, you know, the government has a role to play, but it's basically people, your people killing their people and the other way around. Why can't those people sit down and stop it? Well, I think Mr. Ambassador knows that we have sat down with Nkata. We had a meeting early this year where there was a peace accord. Efforts have been made by both the ANC and the Nkata leadership to make that peace accord work, but yet the violence continues. The government cannot escape the responsibility of maintaining law and order because it is the government of the day. If it steps, steps forward and uh, curb the violence, I'm sure the peace accord would be implemented much more effectively than it has been implemented in the past. The other point I want to raise is why is the government not moving in to stop the public display of what is called cultural weapons, which have been used in some cases to kill people? Mr. Ambassador? The government's already said that, in fact, uh, weapons of violence should not be carried. But, you know, uh, it's not the cultural weapons that the main trouble. It's the AK-47s that are shooting people and are killing people. It's pangas that are hacking people to death. And you see, there's a very easy way to stop it. And it's not enough for the leadership to talk. They have to see to it that their followers, in fact, carry out their wishes, if those are their wishes. Now, it's quite clear, Mr. Harney is right, it's the responsibility of a government to maintain law and order, but no government can keep a policeman at every corner 24 hours of the day. No government can stop, in fact, the kind of behavior that goes on in the middle of the night. Uh, that would require the state of emergency if the parties themselves want to continue with the violence. And we do not want the state of emergency, and therefore it's up to the two people who are fighting to decide to stop fighting. And that's an inescapable fact from which Mr. Arnie cannot escape. Mr. Mazimela, this Washington Post had a story this morning uh, where a reporter for the Washington Post observed some of the violence in, uh, in one of the townships outside Johannesburg. And he wrote very clearly that he saw no evidence on the part of the police or of the leadership of your organization or the ANC to try to stop the violence, that there didn't seem to be anybody who cared about the fact that these people were killing each other. What, what's your, how do you react to that? 
I don't think it will get us anywhere to be talking about single incidences. There is a culture of violence which has developed. One has to remember that most of the young people, those who are 20 and younger, have been brought up to believe that the only way they are going to free South Africa is through violence. So there's an attitude towards violence. And this is why I say the government can't stop the black on black violence. It is we, the black people who are involved in the violence, who must sit down and talk. Unfortunately, Inkata Freedom Party has been negotiating with the wrong people in the ANC. We thought that Mr. Mandela was in control of the ANC, but it is clear to us now, after many talks, even in private with him, that he is not the one who is in charge. In fact, we should be discussing with Mr. Hani. He complains now, Mr. Hani, of cultural weapons, but he knows full well that he has been importing into the country AK-47s, which the South African Communist Party members and ANC members have been hiding under their blankets and using them. Most of the people who have died in the townships have died of gunshot wounds and not of knob carries and spears. Mr. Hani, is that true? Well, that rather surprises me that uh, Sipom Zimela, who's an oppressed black man, doesn't know that apartheid oppressed our people with violence. If the ANC at one time has had to use AK-47, it was in response to a state orchestrated violence. And I would have thought every black man would have commended the efforts of the ANC to take up arms to try and stop state violence. At any rate, to suggest that it is the ANC which carries AK-47 is ludicrous. Everybody knows that some leaders of Inkata have been arrested with AK-47, people like Temba Koza and many others. AK-47s were brought into the country as well by the South African Defense Forces, which captured these weapons in Mozambique, in Angola, in Namibia, and which captured some of them from us. So we cannot be blamed for the presence of AK-47 inside the country. Uh, whilst it is true, that we have our AK-47. We are not using AK-47 to gain influence nor to gain turf in our own country. We are talking to the government at the moment and we have suspended armed actions and we are sticking to that suspension. Mr. Honey, let me ask you this. Is it your uh, perception or your belief that the power of the, that the, the uh, leadership of the ANC, Mr. Mandela and the others, including you, have the power to stop the violence on the part of the ANC? In other words, could you stop your people from, uh, from uh, violent acts? I don't accept at all that our people have initiated violence against anybody. I think, on the other hand, the ANC members are, victim, are victims of violence from vigilantes. Yeah, but, okay, in other words, but, but let's say, let's hypothetical, uh, make it a hypothetical if you don't want to concede that ANC members are committing violence. In a hypothetical case, if ANC members were committing violence, could you stop it? My response to that, that the ANC leadership, all of us, all of us from Mandela downwards, will go out of the way to try to stop violence. All right. We have been talking to a number of organizations, to the PAC, ASAP, and even to Inkata, in an attempt to find effective methods of stopping the violence. All right, let me Mr. ask uh, Mr. Mazimela the same question. Does Chief Budalese and the other leaders of the Inkata have the power to stop violence if it is in fact being committed by your people? Yes, indeed, without any question. We actually want peace. The greatest tragedy is that last year when Mr. de Klerk announced the unbanning of the organization, he was, in fact, announcing the defeat of apartheid. Chris Harney and myself and all others are the great-grandchildren of people who started this struggle, and this struggle has been finally won. The doors to negotiation are open. De Klerk and his government are waiting for us to walk in, sit down, and work out a new constitution. We could have enormous power simply by walking in, setting up committees, and actually participating in the running of the country even before we elect. That's where the tragedy is. Mr. Ambassador, having just heard what we've just heard here, um, and what you already know, what you already bring to this question, 
Do you think the, 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 the power rests with the leaders of the ANC and the, and the leaders of the Inkatha to stop this if they wanted to? Well, I think the two leadership uh, groups could stop the violence, but they have to then make sure that their followers do what they want them to do. In other words, lip service enough is not enough. Uh, it's not enough to talk about it. You actually have to get your followers to do it. And I think that's what's expected from the leadership of the two organizations today. See to it that your followers stop the violence. Yeah. And you see, what you've heard today is one side blaming the other. But let me give you an example. The mayor of Meadowlands was killed the other day. He was an Encanta supporter. Now, who killed him? It's a question that has to be answered. Thereafter, Encarta supporters decided to take revenge. Now, they were Encarta supporters. There's no doubt that both sides are involved in the violence, and if the leadership has the power, which they say they have, which has been said today they have, then, in fact, either they're not exercising that power or there's something wrong with the leadership. Mr. Hani, is he right? Well, I think it is really sanctimonious on the part of Mr. Ambassador to stand up and to say it is the two organizations which have got the power to stop the violence. He forgets the violence of apartheid, the violence of dividing our communities, and the need to reorient it. The police force which we, he has always been fed with racist poison, a police force which has no sympathy for our aspirations. That's why in our view that police force is not taking decisive measures to deal with elements, and those elements are there and have been identified elements who are creating this carnage and mayhem in our country. Mr. Hani, what is your view as to what the motives of the, of the government would be to not stop the violence? Why would they want their country torn apart this way? Well, we know that the, the South African government has a history of destabilizing communities. We saw the, the, this in action in Angola, in Namibia, in Mozambique. We agree that they want to negotiate with us. But they would want to negotiate with an ANC that, at the end of the day, does not become a dominant party. That's why it's busy wooing certain groups and giving favored treatment to those groups in order to isolate the ANC as much as possible. It right. certainly suits this strategy to connive at the killing of ANC supporters so that they should live in fear and so that they don't join the ANC. Mr. Ambassador, that's a serious charge. You know, I must tell you, uh, all three of us are South Africans. All three of us, I think, shouldn't want our country to be a wasteland. I don't think it is fair to say that the government wants that situation. I think there's no substance in it. What we, why do you think Mr. de Klerk started these reforms? Why do you think we're appealing the apartheid laws? Why do you think there's a commitment to negotiation? Surely we don't want a wasteland in our country. And I want to make an appeal to both my colleagues and to all of us. Let's please stop fighting. Let's build South Africa. Let's not look for scapegoats. Let's rather get together and look after a country that's ours and that we really want to build up. Mr. Mazimala, how would you respond to that? I'm really surprised that my brother Chris Hani gives the government so much power. The government doesn't have the power to control us. We defeated apartheid. The government can't make us fight one another if we don't want to fight. The problem is with us. It is we who must sit down and sort this thing out. And as long as we try and find scapegoats, we're never going to solve this problem. Mr. We Hani, the, uh, excuse me, go ahead, finish, sir, I'm sorry. The fact that uh, Mr. de Klerk has agreed to negotiations is evidence that the black people of South Africa have struggled and have struggled successfully. How can then they, the government turn around now and have so much power as to force the ANC to be weak? It can't. The Mr. ANC is too strong for that. Mr. Honey, the, uh, in addition to that point, uh, President de Klerk said uh, earlier this week that if this is not resolved and not resolved soon, if violence does not stop, that soon his country, your country, will be in civil war. Is he right? Well, uh, I want to begin by saying that it does appear that uh, Mr. Mzimela is living in another country. I have just come out of South Africa. Apartheid is still in, 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 in place. It has not been defeated. All powers are in the hands of de Klerk and his minority government. For us, we have been waging a struggle. 
The political prisoners are still in, in jail except for a few who have been released. Uh, only yesterday, hundreds of our, of our young members of the ANC Youth League were picked up, arrested, and charged. Certainly, such actions do not contribute towards the creation of a climate for negotiations. I share the sentiments of, of President de Klerk that everything should be done to prevent our country being plunged into a civil war. But uh, statements are not enough. The police force and the security forces in any country have got the responsibility to bring about peace and order in that country. We know the South African security forces, they have been used in the past to suppress us. What prevents them, I want to repeat this question, from dealing with people who are killing us? And uh, the ANC doesn't have power to stop these elements. We are not a government, we don't have a police force. We share all the sentiments about a new South Africa. But the government which is responsible for all the legacies of apartheid must be seen by all of us to be acting in a fair and impartial way. All right. Gentlemen, we have to leave it there. Thank you all three for being with us. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.